Airport, which is uh, as as you as you sit in the Pentagon, you have the Potomac River and Washington D.C. on one side, and the heliport is located almost exactly on the opposite side of the building, along one of the highways, easily accessible. Uh, even though that they've increased security here significantly at the Pentagon within the past couple of years, Mick, uh, that area. I want to mention to you, Mick, that we are hearing again unconfirmed reports that this was the result of a plane crashing in the area as well. I have no idea, Katie. Uh, all I know is that uh, of people who were in the building who came running from that part of the building thought it was a bomb of some kind. Uh, it, it, according to uh, uh, Chris Brown, my colleague who just came in, it appears that uh, whatever it was, and perhaps it was a plane, Katie, if those are the initial reports, crashed into uh, or the damage is on the roof of the building uh, at the heliport side of the Pentagon, which is just opposite of the Potomac River, as I just said. We're looking at the White House, uh, Mick, because we are learning, learning that there have been some evacuations from the White House. I'm assuming that everyone is being evacuated from the Pentagon? Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's given us the official word yet, uh, but uh, I think that's probably a safe bet. Uh, thank goodness that was a helicopter that just flew by. I'm just a little nervous right now when you hear aircraft go past. But uh, they have, uh, in fact, evacuated that portion of the building. Usually they have sirens that go off in the building alerting you to the fact that uh, it's time to get out. I haven't heard those yet, uh, but just judging by the pictures, uh, it's, it's clear that that part of the building uh, uh, that is not damaged, at least, has been evacuated. Like I said, in the hallway, uh, it was pandemonium. Uh -huh. People were rushing from their offices, rushing outside. And you're in your office fr at the Pentagon right now, Mick, reporting I, to us? I am in the office, but I'm at the opposite side of where this uh, crash occurred. All right. Why don't you see if you can gather some more information? Please, again, be careful, Mick. And we're okay. going to go to Matt, who's going to be talking with Jamie Gangel. All right. Yeah. Katie, thank you very much. I'm joined by Tom Brokaw, and we'll try and recap what's been going on all morning here on the East Coast and in Washington, D.C., in just a few moments. But we do want to go right now to NBC's or today's national. National correspondent Jamie Gangel with some more information. Jamie? Matt, I just want to tell you that U.S. intelligence sources are confirming the reports that one of the planes was a hijacked flight, an American flight from Boston to Los Angeles. They are also now looking into what's going on at the Pentagon. They don't have any details, but they have now put government buildings uh, around the city of Washington on a heightened state of alert. I think part of that is happening formally, but obviously people are seeing what's going on, and some people are leaving buildings as well simply because of the concern following these latest reports from the Pentagon. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. Again, joined by Tom Brokaw, and Katie's back with us now, too. Let's try and recap. It's 947 Eastern Time. Try and recap what's going on so far this morning, and the news is terrible. Just before 9 o'clock. At 8.42, actually. 8.42, a plane crashed into the right-hand tower of the World Trade Center, somewhat about three-quarters of the way up. You can see the smoke billowing from that point of the building. And then about 18 or 20 minutes later, a second plane, a large plane, we saw it actually on tape, hit the left-hand tower of the World Trade Center about halfway up. An enormous fireball on several sides of the building. People trying to be evacuated. There's the tape of the second plane hitting right there, even as people were trying to get out of the first building. We have confirmed reports now that there was one plane hijacked American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles. And that is apparently one of the planes used in this crash. Uh, Matt, uh, there's a report on uh, Dubai television uh, that. In fact, the group claiming responsibility is the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. This comes ironically on a day when the Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres is scheduled to meet with Yasser Arafat. Of course, we've had the meeting in South Africa for the past several days in which the Palestinians were accusing the Israelis of racism. The United States vacated that meeting, but there hasn't been one specific incident. And the Israelis uh, vacated that meeting as well. And the Israelis vacated it as well, but there has not been one specific incident. It's also worth pointing out that terrorism also always has two prongs to it, the physical threat 
and now the psychological threat. This does seem to be surreal, but in fact it is real when you have an explosion of undetermined origin at the Pentagon, the most conspicuous uh, symbol of American capitalism, the Twin Trade Towers here in New York, two deliberate attacks on those towers today, and we do not know for sure who is responsible. And the point. Capitol, by the way, the U.S. Capitol has been evacuated. There have been evacuations taking place at the White House. Needless to say, many people in the Pentagon have left that building as at well. Airports and here, in New York. by the way, in this building in Midtown New York, they have uh, asked a lot of people at 30 Rockefeller Plaza to leave. It's another high-rise Capitol building, which is... Uh, in New York, I came down the length of Manhattan, and a lot of people were simply unaware of what had happened. Uh, as you tuned in the radio, and then they began to get it. Uh, it's election day here in New York. Uh, Primary day. And what, what we have is something that most Americans thought could never occur. As Larry Johnson, a terrorist expert I just spoke with a few moment, moments ago, the former deputy director of the State Department Office of Counterterrorism, claimed this is a first, that he had never heard or seen anything like it. He talked about back in 1993 a German plane being hijacked and there were fears when it was flown to New York that it might be crashed yep, into yep. something. Now, we have, this is a major development. The Federal Aviation Administration has shut down all air traffic nationwide. This country has been immobilized by these terrorist attacks in terms of air travel today. And we don't know where it goes from here. We'll just ask that uh, you stay with us so that as we get hard information, we can share that with you. There's going to be a lot of speculation. The president has described this apparently as a terrorist attack. The FBI has confirmed that an American Airlines flight, Boston to Los Angeles, was hijacked. It's believed that that was the first plane that went into the Twin Trade Towers. Let's go to James Kallstrom, Tom, if we could, the former director of the FBI here in New York. Mr. Kallstrom, uh, I'm sure you've never seen anything like this. Do you have any information that might be helpful to us? Well, not particular information on this tragedy, but uh, certainly what an incredible tragedy. And, uh, you know, all of us in law enforcement, prior in law enforcement, have, have talked for years, and the public has seen the hatred in the world. They've seen the bombing of the World Trade Center. They saw the conspiracy uh, to blow up the tunnels in the uh, United Nations and the FBI building back in the 90s. They've seen the, the bomb at the USS Cole and the, and the bombings of our embassies in Africa. So, I mean, we've known for some time now that this hatred exists. And, uh, and uh, now it looks like uh, that it's uh, culminated in this absolutely horrendous, incredible act uh, against the United States. Jim, as someone in who's, Washington who's today. I'm sorry, as someone who's investigated some of these crimes in the past, and when we think back to 1993 and the World Trade Center bombing and what it took in terms of coordination and planning to pull off that one bomb in the World Trade Center, can you even speculate as to what it might take to coordinate this, what we think so far is a three-pronged attack this morning? Uh, Matt, it, it, it obviously took a lot of coordination. Uh, there's a lot of groups in the world that, uh, that have the ability to coordinate these types of attacks. Uh, as you know, and most people should know, uh, the United States is an open society. I mean, we've talked for years about the, uh, the downside of having our borders basically open uh, and any given day, people fly into our, our airports uh, undocumented and turned into the uh, into the population. They're not certainly all terrorism. They're not terrorists, but I mean, we live in a free society, and I'm not espousing we change right. that. Right. But it's very, very difficult uh, for the FBI and law enforcement to keep track of this when we live in the society that we live in. Jim, if you can stand by for just a moment, because Jim McLeishevsky at the Pentagon has some more information for us, Mick. Uh, Katie, uh, my colleague Chris Brown here at the Pentagon uh, encountered some of those who survived uh, whatever it was, whether it was a bomb or an airplane crashing into the Pentagon. Uh, th one of the survivors who uh, was reportedly injured, had various lacerations, uh, was on the uh, second floor uh, of the D-ring. That is uh, one ring inside the outer ring of the Pentagon when suddenly there was this horrific blast uh, and he said that the second floor buckled upward and then the third floor above him actually collapsed downward. Uh, the scene on the other side of the building as it's being described to us, uh, there are people being removed on stretchers, security forces are evacuating the building right now and, uh, and according to the officials uh, uh, here at the Pentagon, 
uh, they still don't know exactly what it was, but as you reported, Katie, eyewitnesses reported that, in fact, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon. And, Mick, any idea, I, I, I wasn't quite sure if you said this, about the number of people who might have been hurt or worse in this? No idea at all, Katie. As you know, having worked here on any given day, this is a small city, 25 to 30,000 people may be working here at any one time. Uh, that portion of the Pentagon, by the way, uh, had just been remodeled and just reopened uh, if the crash had occurred.